Hey, oh. Matt's got some pool. Oh, yeah. Hey. Don't lose it, David. <laughs> I was just wondering whether we got out of those small ones, whether you pull in something bigger. This is a trout. It is a good one. That's what we're looking for right Oh, my. Oh, good Lord. That beauty. Hold on one second. Hey, thanks for clicking in. I want to talk to you about technique again today, and specifically twitch baits. Now, I like big twitch baits, like the this is a Miralore Catch 5 25 MR or the Paul Brown Fat Boy Rapala Subwalk. This happens to be an 09, which is one of my favorite sizes. I like these big chunky twitch baits and I find them to be very effective. Sometimes I think that for trout over 16 inches you can't throw too large of a twitch bait. They seem to hit even a, even a, a 16 inch fish will easily take this fat boy completely in its mouth. No problem. So what is the point of these small ones like the Miradine? This is a Miralor Miradine. Or like the Miradine Mini. What the? Uh, even the Yozuri has, this is a 3D inshore. What's the point of these things? I never buy these tiny twitch baits. Well, today I was sorry that I completely overlooked them. It was really just David's foresight in having a wider range of baits in his tackle box that saved the day for me. But before I get into that, you know, I can't resist just sharing one of my viewers made some towels for me, embroidered, embroidered some towels for me. And uh, this was fun. You know, this one says, life is short, fish hard. Man, that's, that's a perfect slogan for life. This one's even better. Sometimes it pays to keep your mouth shut. Goodness. If that isn't a motto for Twitter these days, I don't know what is, but I was very grateful to get these towels. You know, my fish cave needs towels, and I can't use flowery towels in a fish cave, in the kitchen, in the bathroom. I need some real fishing towels. So thanks, Vicki. Appreciate that. Well, as you'll see in this video, David was catching trout if effectively and consistently with a popping cork. This was a lake that was three foot deep, kind of an interior lake, inner marsh lake, nice clear water. Not, uh, there was some wind, so it was, it was pushing us down the lake in a nice drift. So everything was set up, except the only thing that was working was that, was that popping cork. And you'll see that I finally do find something that works. And that leads me on to the small twitch baits. Oh yeah. Nice yeah. yeah. Woo! And that's on a, a UV. Ultraviolet, yep. Ultraviolet with an eighth ounce jig head. I typically always fish the jigs with swim bait, popping it off the bottom. Once in a while I'll swim it slow along the bottom or I'll just drag it. But typically it's, it's either a lift and a fall, lift and fall, or pops, like three pops, like a punch train pop, and then let it fall. But what I figured out was that if I jerked that swim bait, and this was a Matrix Shad Ultraviolet on an eight ounce jig head, if I worked that thing like a twitch bait or a jerk bait, I could get a reaction from the trout. 17 inches. This is a... That's so interesting. 
So once I figured out that I could get a response from the trout by working that swim bait, like it was a jerk bait or a twitch bait, but I couldn't get a rapala or a large twitch bait, or I tried jerk baits as well, I couldn't get a response even though I was doing the same motion. I had to think about that from a size perspective. And I went to the Yozuri, this is a two and three quarter inch twitch bait instead of this big chunky subwalk to see what would happen. Yeah. Oh, right there, huh? Ooh. Got him. He came back for it. I saw him hit it. Came back for it. All right. Not a big one, but my first fish of the day on a twitch bait, on a hard bait, and it happens to be a twitch bait. And there we go. So I need to catch another. Well, you know, I got a response on it, so I think I'm safe to say that I've figured something out. And that's that the baits I was using before were too large. I tried the jerk bait, floating jerk bait, and a big subwalk twitch bait, but um, those were too big. I figured out that if I worked a, a swim bait on an eighth ounce jig head fast, like a jerk bait, I was catching fish that way. And so I went to this small Yozori. It's about a two inch long bait and I've already gotten a number of hits on it so not a big fish but we were catching a lot of small ones in here anyway so that I may have established a pattern there there we go Ooh, oh that's a good a decent fish here yeah. Probably 14 or 15. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice trout. Oh, Ooh. gosh. Woo. Closer to 60. That's a nice fish there. Oh, man. Look at that. That's boom. Ow. Nice fish. Right there. So that's the, the little Yozuri. So that definitely proves that. They will hit the smaller jerk bait. I was just thinking they will not hit jerk baits or twitch baits. That's a small twitch bait. Now this type of bait would typically give about three quick jerks, let it drift. Three quick jerks, let it drift. All right, so. I gotta put a new lure on, new twitch bait. This is an unfair lure. It's a greeny 90 slow suspend. Unfair lures. Unfortunately, I threw off that Yozori that was so hot. And uh, this thing is quite a bit bigger. So it's gonna be a, bit, a good test to see whether they will hit a bigger twitch bait or, or it really just is that tiny twitch bait. Fish. Oh, Ooh, that sounds good. Unless it's foul. Look in the mouth. Nice trout. Nice. All right. All right. So, on that unfair bait, unfair lures. It's a decent trout. So I had one other fish come up, hit this bigger bait, but definitely I think that the bigger bait was not. It was too big for the fish. I mean, I know we were catching a lot of 12 and a half inches, 12 inches on the small baits, but we were also catching 17s. So, size made a difference today. So David soon after joined me with the Twitch baits. He used a little red and white Miradine, and it was just as effective as the Yozuri. Before I wrap up this video, I feel like I should address the elephant in the room. And that is, if the popping corks were working just fine, you were catching big trout on them, why even switch from the popping cork to these other methods? 
And that's a very legitimate question, but my answer to that is not just that annoying cork, uh, popping corks can become quite annoying to fish for long periods of time, but there's a little more to it. For one thing, the popping cork has to be watched. There's like a Murphy's Law of Fishing that says whenever you turn away from the popping cork, it will go down. And as we know, if you're not there to strike when the cork goes down, you rarely catch the fish. And I would assume that's the case because when the fish pulls down on that bait, the buoyancy of the cork pulls back very hard. And that trout will spit that bait out because it's very unnatural. So you've got to stare at this cork. You can hardly fish into the reflection of the sun or the glare of the sun on the water. You can't hardly fish in that direction. And it's locked your gaze. So when we're on the water, there's two primary senses that we use to gather information about what's going on so we can make decisions about changes, if something's not working. We're using this information we get through these senses to analyze the environment in the situation. So that's sight and sound. So with sight, we're looking for birds flying. We might see bait in the water. We'll see bait splashing in the, in the distance. We might see oil slicks from feeding fish. We'll be looking for tide lines, current lines. We'll be looking at sonar. And then, of course, sound, similar sorts of thing. We're list, listening for splashing. We're listening for birds diving, those sorts of sounds. Well, a popping cork hijacks the sight senses. It locks you into staring at the cork. It cuts out a lot of your vision. You only have kind of your peripheral vision. You can't look around, be an observer of the environment because it's hijacked your sense of sight. It's not the case with twitch bait or jerk bait. That is like an impact technique because you get the feedback response via touch. And I can't tell you how many times when I'm fishing with a jig, I have set the hook on a trout. When I was looking at the sonar, I was looking at the bottom structure uh, or looking at fish marks on the sonar and I'm just holding my rod. I feel the tap, set the hook, I've got the trout. Plus, there's a difference between feeling the fish strike your bait and just seeing your cork go down. It's like a lot of things in light. Feeling is a bit more satisfying than just seeing. Kind of like having a real girlfriend versus an Instagram girlfriend. Hey, if you liked this video or you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done that yet, there's a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe. Get out there. Fish when you can.